What is up, watch friends? Welcome to another episode of Talking Time Pieces with Tony. I'm Tony. Today, I am wearing my Rolex Oyster Perpetual 36 millimeter green dial. Love this watch. And I think the size, I have a six and a half inch wrist, so I think the size is pretty good. I like the classic size for the OPs and the uh, date just at least anyway, so. Um, but today's video, we are going to be talking about Breguet. After uh, uh, last night's Q and A, um, basically, uh, you know, I, someone had asked a question about uh, if I, I could replace one one watch out of the Holy Trinity, one watch brand out of the Holy Trinity, which brand would I remove and replace it with? And I said I would get rid of AP in a freaking heartbeat and replace it with Breguet. So that, you know, I got some comments on that and uh, decided that I was going to do a video about Breguet anyway. So I thought, you know, why not just do it now? So let's roll the intro and we'll get into Breguet watches. All right. Talking time pieces with Tony. Talking. Okay, so <clears throat> I, I guess it's no secret that I'm not a huge fan of AP. Um, you know, I think they are a one-trick pony, you know? I mean, they've got some of their old old watches and whatever are just, you know, granted, they, they, they do make good watches. I'm not saying they don't make good watches, if not great watches, and they do have a lot of history. Um, but they just keep re redecorating the same watch over and over. I said this last night. They just It's the one trick thing. Here's the same watch over and over again. It'd be like if, if Rolex said, here's another OP, let's do this, and here's another OP, and it's the same thing over and over again. It's just like, what, what else you got? Now, it's not through the fault of their own, I don't think, that they do have other, you know, models, of course, you know what I mean? But they just don't get the same accolades as the offshore royal oak you know it's just just what it is you know what i mean and it's like and uh they were not the first company to come out with that shape gerald genta did not invent that design um i said this before you know i believe that that design uh stemmed from zenith the first defy that came out was in 1968 uh, or 69 i think and then with the screws on the bezel you know, I believe came from uh, the Cartier Santos, you know, so put those two watches together and then you've got the, uh, you got the, the uh, Royal Oak, you know what I mean? So having said that, <laughs> let's move on to how amazing Breguet is and what they've done. All right. So uh, 1775 Abraham Louis Breguet set up shop. Um, and that's when he really started. I think he started before that, but just 1775, sort of the, the more, you know, recorded in history. Uh, 1780, uh, he invented the perpetual self-winding movement, uh, which was his first major success. That was kind of like with a pendulum, you know? If you ever seen those uh, wall clocks that have the pendulum, and that's what keeps the watch wound, um, you know? So there's, there, that's a huge, huge, accomplishment for you know Abraham Louis Breguet. Um, 1783 I mean he created Breguet numerals and Breguet hands you know um, if you've heard you know well this particular watch has Breguet numerals or this particular watch has Breguet hands which tons of brands use them I mean that that's no one's have you heard anyone say well this has got AP hands and this has got AP numerals, you know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, and I'm not trying to dog AP, I'm just basically comparing the two uh, as far as why I think that the AP should be knocked off the Holy Trinity, you know? Because Breguet belong with AP and Vacheron. I definitely, definitely, no questions, man. Um, so, 1786, uh, he, he came up with the Guilichet, uh engine turned dials you know those are machine turned or engine turned um and the beautiful i mean breguet are the king of uh guilleche you know so 
1795, uh, he, they, he came up with the Breguet balance spring. Um, it was designed in 1675 by, I don't know, some other dude named like, like Al Bundy or something. Um, but it had major issues, but Breguet was the one, Abraham Louis Breguet was the one who sort of resolved it, fixed everything and made it what it is as to what we have today as far as the mainspring goes. Um, 1798, uh, he invented the constant force escapement. It was a patent from 1798 um, and it provides uh, constant flow uh, of the power, whether the watch is fully wound or almost completely unwound. So, you know, if you have something that's really wound and sometimes it'll go unwind fast and then slows down as say the watch is running out of power. In this case, it just keeps that constant even flow of, of uh, power to the watch. Um, in uh, 1820, uh, he invented the, it was the first chronograph. 1810, the first wrist watch uh, for the Queen of Naples. So he invented the very, very, very first ever wrist watch to the Queen of Naples. Beautiful watches, man. They still make that design to this day. So it's pretty cool. Um, in 1801 is when he invented the tourbillon. And a lot of people think the uh, tourbillon is an actual complication. It's not, it's part of the escapement. And that's used in a sense for, you know, back, the, I mean, tourbillons are really kind of irrelevant now. I mean, they look cool and they are a cool feature. Um, and a lot of, you could say complication, but it's not, like I say, a complication. But it's part of the escapement. And, and how that works is, for instance, you can have, when you hear of watches that are like COSC certified uh, or certified chronometer, um, and it's tested in five different positions, when you hear things like that, it's because back with, especially with pocket watches, you may have the watch at this, you know, a certain, in your pocket, you know, and if you turn it, it changes the velocity of how that watch is running or, you know, how that machine is running in different, different uh, angles. So you, nowadays everything is so much more modernized, you don't need it, but that regulates that as far as, as far as that goes. So again, it's just part of the escapement and helps with not only just gravity, but the way that that exactly how that watch at different angles. Make sense? Yeesh. <laughs> Um, and then, then when you go to like 1999 is when this, you know, I, I jumped forward a shit ton because it's, there's just so much there that this, this, that Breguet have accomplished and done. Um, you know, they were bought out by this watch group, you know, um, and you know, when you look at Breguet watches and you look at the classic line, the traditional line, you know, the, the type 20. Um, the sports aero, you know, pilot's watch, you know what I mean? They just, it's high horology and it's, they just don't get the notoriety, you know, that they deserve. They just don't. And is it part of the, you know, I know the Swatch group, you know, their baby is Omega, you know, and Omega is getting all the love, you know, Blanc Pond is, you know, they did the, the, the Blanc Pond's uh, 50 Fathom Swatch. Um, and the Blanc Ponds are great. Another great brand that uh, Jean-Claude Beaver, you know, brought back from the dead, you know, and when I say the dead, it wasn't just dead laying on the ground. It was six feet under and he had to dig it up and, you know, he, he really did wonders with that brand. But Breguet, in a sense, just never got that, don't, just don't have that recognition anymore. There's something missing and there's something wrong. Is it Breguet's fault? No. Is it the Swatch Group's fault? I don't think so. I think that, you know, I mean, obviously they could advertise more, but advertising alone is just not going to cut it. You know what I mean? It's got to be something, for instance, like if you look at John Mayer when he inter did that interview with Hodinkee several years ago and he brought up the, like the John Mayer Daytona. It wasn't called the John Mayer Daytona. He was called, basically called it a sleeping giant, right? So, you know, you need, you need someone to get in there with a Breguet and basically say the Breguet is the next best thing to a puppy. And, you know, whether it be LeBron James or, you know, whatever celebrity, pick your fucking whoever, you know. And, you know, that's, that's what I think it just needs to be. It needs to be put on someone's wrist and noticed, you know. I mean, if you go to the award shows, 
I don't go to the award shows. I don't even watch the award shows. But you know, you'll get watch brand of the year. You know, it's it's Cartier. Cartier is another one I think could be in the the, the holy trinity. Except they're primarily a jewelry maker. You know what I mean? So, but their watches are are you know just extremely you know high horology as well. Where they have that capability and they've done some absolutely amazing things with their watches. Or then you get the Omega thing. You know what I mean? They'll they'll pay celebrities to wear their watch. You know what I mean? So. And it's a cash grab with a lot of these brands, but in a sense, it's just that um, right now, as it stands, Breguet are just under the freaking radar. They're doing what they're doing, and they have a loyal following of, of who buys their watches, but where are they going to be with the younger generation? You know what I mean? Because, you know, the people that buy their watches, you don't see young people wearing a Breguet. You know what I mean? And, and it, it's eventually those old people are going to not be around anymore. You know what I mean? So they have to go somewhere. They have to figure it out, whether it be Breguet themselves, the Swatch Group, or just watch enthusiasts, you know? Because if you're a watch enthusiast, man, how can you not look at a Breguet and go look at what they've done and their patents and what they've accomplished? I mean, absolutely amazing, you know? You can pick up the Type 20 for like, fuck, I've seen it as low as like 6,000 bucks. For a high horology watch, man, this watch outperforms, outdoes everything, anything that a Submariner would do, you know? I hate to say it, um, but, you know, and the, what more can you say? Breguet really deserve a lot more than what they're getting, you know what I mean? And whether or not you're watching this video at this point, because um, it's really, it's kind of true, you know, unless you're doing videos about Rolex, people just shut it off. You know, I don't want to hear about it. It's not, it's not uh, the ones that like, I am such a huge fan of watches. Oh, but that's not about Rolex. Let's turn it off. Anyway, you guys, that was my little sort of rant, if you will, or what I think about Breguet. Um, I appreciate everyone who watches, likes, subscribes, all that good stuff, man. You guys are awesome. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.